Amazon EC2 is Elastic Compute Cloud. 2 stands for using the letter C two times. AWS EC2 is a web service that provides secure, resizable compute capacity in the cloud. Hello, my name is Alex. I am a senior software engineer specializing in AWS development. In this video, we'll talk about EC2 basics. We're going to define what EC2 is. We're going to look at the key features of EC2. We're going to look at the configuration options, and also we will do the demo. So what is AWS EC2? Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, or EC2, is a web service that provides resizable compute capacity in the cloud. It's designed to make a web-scaled cloud computing easier for developers. AWS EC2 has the following benefits. It is scalable. You can add more memory or vCPU to your instances. That way you scale it vertically, or you can add more instances so you can scale it horizontally and you can put an auto scaling group on it. It is a reliable service. Uh, AWS provides you with availability zones and you can place your instances in the different uh, availability zones. It is flexible. You can make changes to your instances almost on the fly and it is cost effective. It is basically way cheaper to run certain configurations on the cloud than from your office or garage. Let's take a look at the key features of AWS EC2. Uh, one of them is elasticity, so you can easily scale up or down as your needs change. You have a variety of instance types and sizes. You have general purpose, you have compute optimized, memory optimized, storage optimized, or graphical processing unit instances. You can also choose from different sizes. You have micro, extra large, 4x large, 8x large, and etc. So the size which gives you the number of vCPUs and the memory. Obviously, if it's bigger, you have more vCPUs and more memory. Uh, we're going to be using T2 Micro in our demo because T2 Micro is a part of AWS free tier. Also, you have storage options. You have Elastic Block Store. This store is basically a networking store that you can attach to your instance. And by default, if you destroy your instance, this Elastic Block Store is destroyed. However, you can check an option uh, to not destroy the store. So you can destroy the instance, but preserve Elastic Block Storage and later on maybe attach to different instance. You have Instance Store. This is the fastest one, but it's inside the instance. And when the instance is destroyed, the store is destroyed as well. And you have Elastic File System. This store is also networking storage, and you can share it uh, between different or among different instances. Other features of AWS EC2 include networking. There is a virtual private cloud or a VPC. You also have an option to obtain Elastic IP address. Uh, this is a static IP address that will stay with you. You have to pay a little bit extra for it and you can attach it to instances because when you create an instance, AWS can assign an IP address, but when you destroy the instance, this IP address doesn't stay with you. Also, you have an enhanced networking. Uh, Security-wise, you're going to have AWS Identity and Access Management, or IAM, so you can assign specific users to have access to your EC2. You also have security groups. Those are attachable virtual firewalls that will allow or deny traffic inside your EC2 instance. And you also have SSH key pairs that will allow you to SSH into your instance from your local machine. You also have a cost management. There are different options. You can have on-demand instances. Those are the most expensive. You can have reserved instances. You can reserve an instance for up to one or three years, and you get about 60% of savings. Uh, you have spot instances. You can bid on unused instances, and you can get up to 90% in savings. However, you got to keep in mind, if somebody overbids, you on the price of those instances. Those instances will be taken away from you. Those instances are good for the workloads that can be interrupted. Uh, finally, you have savings plans where you commit to spend a certain amount of money for the period of one or three years, and you also can get savings for that. Let's take a look at EC2 instance configuration options. When we're going to spin up an EC2 instance, we need to configure certain things, and those things are instance size, you want to choose instance based on your specific workload requirements. 
then you have to choose AMI and AMI stands for Amazon Machine Image and it provides the information required to launch an instance. Usually it will be an operating system like Linux or a Mac OS and it may sometimes depending on the image um, have certain software already pre-installed and there is a variety of Amazon AMIs you can choose from. You also have instance purchasing options, right? On-demand reserved spot and savings plan. You will also have to configure storage. Either it's going to be EBS volume and it's going to be in our demo, or you can put instance store volumes or EFS. Next, you're going to define networking configuration. You're going to have VPC, subnet, security group, and if you choose, you can uh, purchase elastic IP address. You can also define auto scaling which will automatically adjust the number of instances based on demand. But for that, you will have to configure auto scaling group and a load balancer. We're not going to cover it in this demo. A very useful configuration option is a bootstrap script. It is known as EC2 user data. It automates boot tasks and it only runs during first start. So you can put certain commands to, for example, install um, your Apache server or Nginx server. And that's what we're going to be doing in the demo. Now let's take a look at instance creation overview. The instance is placed in a region and in the VPC and you can choose availability zone or it can be randomly chosen for you. The VPC will be configured automatically for you by AWS, uh, but you can also configure your own VPCs. The instance is created based on AMI and it also going to have EBS attached volume. And then when the instance is created, we will download SSH key pair so we can log into our instance from our local computer. All right, let's jump into the demo. But before we do that, if you are enjoying this video, please like and subscribe to our channel to help YouTube recommend it to more viewers. Let's get started. I am in AWS console. Let's go ahead and go to EC2 and let's create a new instance. We can click on launch instances and we can give it a name, demo instance. Next, we need to select uh, Amazon machine image or AMI. There is a lot of images you can choose from. Uh, you can also click on browse for more AMIs. For demo purposes, we're going to choose Amazon uh, Linux and it's going to be Amazon Linux 2023 AMI and it's a free tier eligible. Next, there is instance type selection. We're going to be using T2 Micro. However, you can click on it and see a lot, a lot, a lot more instances. Each instance size gives you different uh, number of vCPUs and memory. Uh, in our case, we're going to have only one uh, vCPU and one gigabyte of memory. Next, uh, we need to get the key pair, SSH key pair, to log in into our instance, and we can click on a create new SSH pair, key pair. But if you already have uh, one key pair, right, you can choose it from your already existing key pair. But let's go ahead and create the new one. We're going to click on it. Uh, we're going to select RSA. You basically want to select RSA for anything higher than, I want to say, Windows 8. Right. And for Mac, obviously, as well. But if you have like a Windows 7 or something, um, you can choose dot PPK. Let's go ahead and call our key pair demo key pair. And we click create key pair. And it's going to prompt us to uh, download that key pair. I'm going to put it in my downloads folder, but you may want to put it in your dot SSH folder and the demo key pair is selected. Next, we're gonna go into network settings, but let's go ahead and click edit into the network settings. Uh, you can see that there is a VPC selected and it's a default VPC. This VPC was created by AWS, so it just selects it by default. Uh, subnet, it says no preferences uh, because it can do it automatically. We want to launch our instance in a public uh, subnet. However, it's not really clear since AWS created those subnets for us, which ones are public, which ones are private. So we'll just put no preference. However, we will enable auto assign public IP address. So if AWS auto assigns public IP address, it will have to place the instance in a public subnet. Now we have an option to create security group or select existing one. I already have two security groups created, so I'm going to select both of them. If you want to learn how to do it, please check out the video on security groups. 
I'm going to choose the web access demo and I'm going to also choose SSH access demo security groups. The security groups allows us to access web and SSH into the instances and we're going to look at them a little bit later. Next, we have a configure storage section. It's going to be an EBS storage. And here you have GP2 or GP3 and also IO and IO2. So GP3 will be a little better than GP2. It's going to be faster. If you want it even faster, you can choose IO1 or IO2, but we're not going to do that. Uh, so we'll just select GP3. And here we can also select uh, how many gigabytes do we want for the storage? And it says that up to 30 gigabytes uh, will be included in a free tier. So we'll just leave it as eight gigabytes. Now we can click on advanced details and you have a lot of advanced details so you can configure, but we are interested in user data. And if we scroll all the way down, we have a section to enter the user data. User data is a bootstrapped script that will be run on the first start of the instance. And we're going to put the following code in there. We're going to put shebang here or hashtag exclamation mark. And we're going to put forward slash bin forward slash bash. This means that the script should be run using bash shell. Next, we're going to put a plain comment that is going to install Nginx server. We're going to run yum update with a dash y flag, meaning we're automatically going to say yes on this action. And we're also going to uh, do yum install nginx with a dash y flag as well. The next, we're going to start nginx. The next line when will enable nginx on each time the instance reboots or starts up. And finally, we're going to do echo and we're going to put hello from nginx and we're going to put the host name of the instance and we're going to put it in index.html file that lives in USR shared nginx HTML. That's where nginx puts the default HTML file. With a user data script in place, let's hit launch instance. And while the instance is launching, let's go ahead and take a look at the security groups. And we have the web access demo and SSH demo. Let's take a look at the web access demo. We're going to take a look at the inbound rules right here. And we have allow traffic on port 80 from the source of IPv4 and then from the source of IPv6. If we look at the SSH demo security group, uh, we can see that there is a rule that allows SSH traffic on port 22 from pretty much anywhere. I'm just doing it for demo purposes. However, if you do it, choose my IP address. This way you're going to allow SSH traffic into your instance from your IP address and it's a much secure option. Let's go back to EC2. Our EC2 instance is started and running. Now let's select the instance and right here in the details, we're going to see the public IP address of the instance and you also have a public DNS address of the instance as well. So you can use either of them to access the instance. Let's go ahead and copy public IP DNS and open the new tab and we can paste it in. And after a little while, we're going to see our Nginx server is running and it says hello from Nginx IP and it tells us the IP of the instance. Also, as I said, you can use the public IP address to do the same thing. If you copy it and paste it in the browser, you're going to see the Nginx server running. But we're going to copy this IP address and use it for SSHing into our instance. Let's switch to the CLI on the local machine and we're going to paste the following code in here. So we're going to have SSH command and we're going to be using the ec2-user. That's the user for Amazon Linux. And this is IP address of our instance. And we're going to be using the key that we already downloaded, the demo key pair that I put in a downloads folder. However, you want to put it in your .ssh folder. And let's go ahead and hit enter. Now it's going to tell us the authenticity of the host can be established. And you're going to say yes to this. And you will have to do it only once when you're SSHing in the instance just the first time. You click OK. And it told us that it added instance IP address to the list of known hosts and it SSH'd us into the instance. Okay. If we go back to the EC2 section, you can see on the bottom we have information, uh, the details tab that we used to look at the IP address and public IPv4 DNS. You also have status and alarms where you can configure your alarms. You have monitoring tab where you can see CPU utilization and network. 
also on the security tab that's where you can find your security groups and see what's allowed into the instance what traffic is allowed you have a networking tab right here where you can see which subnet your instance is launched into and which vpc you can have a storage tab that will show you the storage and how the storage is utilized and also you have a text tab where you can tag your instance also, when the instance is selected on the top right here, we have actions button. And if you click on it, you have a different actions right here. Most of them you have security, you have networking action, you can uh, have image templates and other things. Right here, next to the actions button, you have instance state button, and you can choose to stop your instance. For example, if you are not using it, you can stop it so you're gonna charge the money. But you gotta keep in mind that if you stop the instance and then start it again, the IP address will change unless you're gonna have an elastic IP address attached to that instance that will stay the same, but it will cost you additional money. You can also reboot your instance. And when we configured our Nginx, if we reboot our instance, it will start up on the instance reboot. And you also have an option to terminate instance. Since it's a demo instance, let's go ahead and terminate it. Here it warns us that EBS volume will be also deleted, which is fine with us. Let's go ahead and click terminate. As you can see, AWS EC2 provides scalable and flexible compute capacity in the cloud. It offers a wide range of instance types and configuration options. When configuring EC2, it's crucial to prioritize security. To enhance our security measures, we attach security groups to our instances, implementing specific security group rules. For more information about security groups, be sure to watch our video on the topic.